Hello, this is Coach Aaron Saft in the MR Running Pains podcast, and I have a special guest today, um, another one of my athletes that I coached to the Hellbender 100. Her name is Teresa Bowser. Um, she is, as you'll hear in her story, uh, just kind of getting into the the ultra scene, and I mean, what a performance. I can't wait to, to share her story with you. So uh, I hope you enjoy this episode uh, and Teresa's story about um, getting into ultra and uh, and completing the Hellbender 100. Um, at the end of the episode, I'll catch up with you guys as to everything that's going on in the world of MR running pains as usual. Um, but uh, I want to thank Teresa for coming on and uh, taking time. I know she's extremely busy, especially trying to catch up after having time off from the race. So thank you, Teresa, and congratulations once again on your finish. Um, so here's my conversation with Teresa Bowser. Here we are. She made it. She We're here. It. We're alive. <laughs> <laughs> and she is smiling and happy. Uh, Teresa Bowser is my guest. She is wonderful. And uh, I knew there would be a finish. I never questioned it. I've been waiting for this podcast episode. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank um, you for your faith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Teresa, why don't you start with uh, just an introduction of yourself? What's your background growing up? Um, where you're from? All that good stuff. Yeah, all the fun stuff. Um, so, hi, my name is Teresa. Um, I grew up in Florida and I've been living in Asheville for, I think, like five years. I graduated from Florida State. I moved up to Charlotte, moved to Asheville, Colorado, California, and then kind of made my home back in Asheville. Excuse my voice as well. It is lost. <laughs> it is somewhere on the trail um, out there in the mountains. But I grew up not running. Um, I did gymnastics to get started like in elementary school um, as a little teeny tot, fun thing to do. And that was kind of like my sports. Um, I was always playing in the woods, grew up out in the country in Ocala, Florida, um, but never really like competitively. Um, got into high school, did cheerleading and went to school at Florida State. And I joke about it now, but it's I've always been super competitive nature and I use my competitive nature in college to be like the best partier. <laughs> I excelled at that. I wanted to out party everybody, the biggest guy I could out drink. Um, so that was kind of a lifestyle that I prided myself on for a very long time, that that was who I was. It was my identity and um, running and sports and doing healthy stuff was just not in the picture for a very long time. I moved out to Colorado and started snowboarding and partying and bartending and had fun out there, you know, um, moved to California and kind of did the same. And once I got to California, I think I was like 33, you know, maybe time 29 ish. I think I just kind of started to want more. Um, you can't party forever. <laughs> um, and I did sign up for, it's funny, I did sign up for a 5K out there. And I started training. And I ran one mile and I said, I am not doing this. <laughs> this is, who does this? <laughs> so I didn't even show up. I was like, this, no way, this is dumb. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <clears throat> so yeah, just slowly but surely just kind of started getting on the health track. I started working out. Um, I started doing Insanity, and I loved it so much. I got trained and certified to teach Insanity. So I started teaching Insanity classes at UNC, or not UNC, um, the college out in Santa Cruz, USC. USC, Irvine. Yeah. Um, so started teaching out there and come to find out you really can't teach insanity classes when you're hungover. So <laughs> <laughs> I learned that really quick. Um, like? Can huh? you explain what one of those classes look like? Um, they are intense. So like the whole thought process behind insanity is you go as hard as you can for as long as you can, whatever that means to you. So, um, 
functional fitness. I mean, you're doing jumping jacks and squat jumps and getting on the floor and it's full body weight, but you're up and down burpees and different movements. And I mean, it was really empowering because a lot of teaching it as doing as much as you can for as long as you can, whatever that meant to you means so much to different people who you are teaching. Like maybe it's one extra jumping jack when you couldn't do a jumping jack. Um, So just like watching my students go through that as like they didn't know I was kind of on my own journey of that as well. It really like just started to change my whole life of how I just perceived everything. Like I wanted to get clean and sober and healthy. So what did I have to do in that moment to do that? Um, And it was hard. And so was insanity. And so are these kids that couldn't do one burpee. Now they're doing five at my next class. So little did they know they're teaching me so much during like some of my hardest times too. Um, So just through that, I started to get healthier and healthier. I moved back to Asheville and that's when it really hit me that, okay, like I'm home, I'm around my friends again. Um, I could separate myself from what I was doing in such a different way. And I was still working with Beachbody at the time and doing like the insanity stuff. And it grew and grew and grew. I started doing personal development, um, mind shift change, like, okay, I can do this. I can become this person who I always thought that I wanted to be this extra person, but I just didn't know like what that even meant. So just clawing and fighting your way through something to get somewhere that you didn't really know. Um, that's kind of like where I was for a very long time. Like I wanted to fight for something. So let's just do it and figure it out. Um, so then continue doing beach body. And then one day Spartan came across my Facebook page And I was like, what is this thing? Like, you get to run in the mud? Like, this looks crazy. And at the time, I had no idea that Spartan was, like, a thing. Like, I didn't know it was a company. I didn't know, like, they had races everywhere. I just thought it was one thing they had in Asheville. And it was the next weekend. So I couldn't take off work for it yet. And I was just like, if it comes back next year, I'm doing it. And lo and behold, Facebook probably remembered (laughs) <laughs> and it put the ad in my face again. And I was like, I guess I'm doing this Spartan thing. So I went out there and kind of the rest is history. Um, I fell in love with Spartan. And I was like, this is what I was made to do. And I did it too non-competitive. And I vowed, I was like, I, I have to like compete. So I started doing age group. Um, that was going great. I was having so much fun. And then COVID happened. So all of the Spartans got shut down and my friend happened to be running a 50 miler or no, a 30 miler. And there was a 50 miler um, happening as well. And she dared me to do it. And I was like, what? (laughs) No, (laughs) that's dumb. I'm not running that. Like you run for Spartans, um, but you don't like run, run like that. I was like, I no. She's like, come on, I dare you. It's like, fine. So now here we are in this podcast and <laughs> that's how I, that's how I got here pretty much. <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> um, yeah. I mean, you know, when you and I first connected, um, you know, you were really, your goal was to, to get to, to Hellbender. Um, and, you know, for maybe for those that don't know what Hellbender is, um, why don't you just talk about what Hellbender is for a moment? Just a little jog in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so a Hellbender is a hundred mile race and it's here in Asheville. Um, so how I explain it to everybody is crisscross applesauce all over Mount Mitchell mountains, <laughs> you go up and down and around. Um, so you're traversing up, you're coming down and technical climbs, technical descents, long descents, long climbs. And yeah. And what, um, what drove you or, uh, compelled you to want to do Hellbender? Because it was hard. 
<laughs> um, everyone kept saying like it was one of the hardest things on the East Coast and that's what I gravitate to. Like, let me pick the hardest thing. Um, I'm kind of going back to like getting into ultras and stuff after that 50 miler, I was kind of dabbling in trail running. Um, and I went and volunteered at a 24 hour race here. And I saw like, that was like my first big experience of seeing people run for that long and like what this whole ultra community is. And it, it was mind boggling. I was like, these people are running for this long. Like up until then I did a 30 mile Spartan race and that was all like I'd been witness to. <laughs> and it just like instilled like, oh my gosh, like I want to feel that. Like I want to know that like you can actually do the human body is capable of doing so much that we don't even think or like begin to fathom. Um, so to witness that, and then it kind of got implanted in my head, like, okay, maybe I'll do that race and try for a hundred miles. And then I learned about Hellbender and I was like, what's that? Like, I want to do that. I, I want to try that. I want to go out there and they're like 26,000 feet, 24,000 feet of elevation gain. I'm like, bring it on. Let's do this. Um, so just doing the crazy and kind of seeing how far the body can go and pushing your limits and. Yeah. And then I paced it too last year. So after pacing it, it was like game on, like (laughs) (laughs) I can't pace this and then not come back and do it. So (laughs) talk about your, your growth from, you know, when this, this is, is this person still your friend that dared you (laughs) to, (laughs) (laughs) yes. (laughs) (laughs) So talk about, um, you know, the growth from the dare to hellbender, um, you know, you, you kind of, um, you put some benchmarks along the way to kind of, you know, help you progress to it. So talk about that for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, after the 50 miler, I said, I'm never doing this again. (laughs) Um, no, I trained for that one. That one was great. Um, it ended unexpectedly awesome too. Um, and then I had, the 30 mile Spartan race, which was a huge, like, okay, if I could do the 50, I could do the 30 add in the obstacles. Do you remember what, what race the 50 miler was? Big turtle. Big turtle, which was where? Uh, it's in on the Shotui trail. Am I saying that, that right? Is that Kentucky? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, and that's like, I didn't really know nutrition or anything. I was just flying through eight stations and just... I don't even know how I finished that one. I finished eighth, but like knowing what I know now, I was like, what did you even do out there? (laughs) Such a baby. Um, So then let's see. So that puts us starting of January, like last year, I did Assault on Black Rock. Um, It was Art Lobe, Assault on Black Rock, Cold Mountain, and then shut in and then hellbender and it was like back to back to back to back weekends and then quest for the crest was like the next weekend so (laughs) talk about like overtrained and undertrained at the same time um I was just doing anything and everything like let's climb this mountain let's go do 30 miles every single weekend um not eating still on my runs like I came from being a fasted runner and not eating before my runs or really like during my runs and just how many miles can I get on my feet and how much elevation gain that's all I knew what to do um and that landed me with an injury um after quest I probably shouldn't even ran that one I mean I knew going into it that I was gonna get hurt I was already hurt like I was just praying for the best there but I came out of that one. My knee was pretty messed up. And that's when I was like, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to go for Hellbender and be on that level, I have to find help. Like I have to find a coach because I'm going to kill myself. Um, so I got a PT and I found you. Someone was like, yeah, you should like hire Aaron. He 
the hellbender guy. And I was like, what? That's all right, cool. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> so then it brings me to you. <laughs> um, the hellbender guy. <laughs> and the hellbender guy. That's the someone they're like, yeah, the, the guy who does hellbender or the hellbender guy. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, like you put me on a plan and from the very beginning, I wanted to get to hellbender. So we kind of did little races, well, little big races to get there. Um, and of course, still had some big goals for each race, but I knew those were stepping stones. Like I needed those stepping stones to get to Hellbender if I wanted to do Hellbender as well as it happened. You know, I'm very happy with what happened out there. I had to, I had to cross some steps first. Um, yeah. So yeah. And one of those was um, a Scottish Summit, right? Scottish Summit yep. 100K? Yep, because you had to have 100K um, to qualify for Hellbender. So it was going to be lead mine, <laughs> <laughs> lead mine nine, which would have been crazy. But that one got canceled because of uh, the hurricane came through. Um, so last minute, we decided to do Scottish Summit. And that was my first, my longest run, longest time on feet. Um, and that was great. That was fun. Lost about five toenails on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had a great result. That if I remember, you were third female. Is that second? Second female. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Question <laughs> anyway. Get um, your stats right. I'm you know? sorry. Uh, <laughs> going off memory there, not alter sign up. That's my fault. <laughs> 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 um she had a great performance obviously uh we were really stoked with that um and then you know we she was um kind of started worrying about her old ways like are we doing enough or am i climbing enough and you know i i had to say yes we're gonna get to that i promise it's you know it's it's in the build you know we'll mm -hmm. we'll have you ready and uh, to her credit when i looked in training peaks green means that something is complete and if i go back through Teresa's. Uh, calendar yeah it's you know 99% green there's not many misses uh, which is just a credit to her and her commitment to to the training program uh, not to say that there weren't little breaks here and there you know you went out west and went snowboarding and uh, you know did a few little trips which we need you know these little breaks are not bad and I think that's something that people miss is that they you know they they feel that you know if there is this small break in the training routine, it's just going to throw them way off. But having a three day period where you just take off some time, you know, perhaps you're doing another activity, perhaps it's not. I mean, you're just taking three days off. It's totally fine because she came back and she was you know fresh and ready to train. You know, and and you know for the training block we had, she stayed mentally motivated because she plugged in those little breaks, and I think that really did help, which was cool. Um. And, you know, with the build, you know, we started incorporating some, you know, stuff, you know, about nine weeks out, we started including some, you know, some more hiking, some treadmill incline hiking, some weighted vest, you know, walks. And I mean, we really started to engage and, you know, you took off and went to the course a ton. You got mm -hmm. to see, I mean, was there any piece of the course that you didn't see prior to the race? Mm-mm. Um, I did actually realize the little part from Big Tom to Camp Out, well, Big Tom to Mount Mitchell on the BHT, that part I did not get a fresh perspective on, which is funny because I probably should have. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, my feet hit that trail um, every step of the way. Which is pretty incredible and very fortunate. You know, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of people like, you know, don't get to see uh, the, the majority of a course prior so you yeah. had that knowledge going in, which was fantastic. Um, leading into the race itself, you know, from my perspective, training had gone really well. You had put in the volume, the climbing, you know, everything looked succinct. Where were you? How were you feeling? I felt really good. Like it was almost kind of, I was like, I should I be more nervous? Should I be more scared? Should I think too, like I learned so much from even like doing, so like back up, we did still waters after Sky to Summit where it was the 24 hour loop race. And my big goal was a hundred miles um, to figure out what that even feels like. And just the growth from like preparing for that race, the mindset for that race to like the couple weeks before Hellbender 
like I was just so excited I felt so like I can't even explain how good I felt of course I was nervous you know like you have to be nervous like you're about to go on an adventure and never doing a hundred miles miles let alone on that course for the first time I had no idea how I was gonna feel at what point or is this nutrition going to work? Or even though how much you can practice, there's so many unknowns, but I was ready. Like I was just so ready to get out there and run. I just wanted to run. Like I was, but even like packing for like my crew and like Stillwaters to Hellbender, packing the crew car, packing this and getting organized. I even mentioned to you, I'm not packing anything and everything. I'm like, I'm still packing extra stuff, but everything had intention in meeting and versus let me just throw my whole closet in the car and hope for the best. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think that goes to show with the training and even like your mentorship, like through it all my millions of questions and <laughs> yeah, just like soaking it in and just really dialing it in this race. Absolutely. Uh, and just to set the timeline, <laughs> um, she ran um, the, uh, Sky to Summit uh, in 2022. Um, Stillwater was at the end of the year, um, mm-hmm. which was the 24 hour race she referred to. Then we downcycled. We took a little rest because you made, was it 90, how many miles? 92.5. 92.5. And you had like a two hour <laughs> nap or something. Is that right? At the end, like I just pushed through and then, yeah, like I got cold and wet and was like shivering from the bone. Um, so once I sat down at like 630, like the whole goal was to get me warm. And then I never got out of the chair, <laughs> but <laughs> the chair I had 92 better. miles under my belt. So I was like, you know what? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you won overall, right? I got overall. Yeah. Yeah. Which is awesome. So, uh, but then, yeah, we took a little downtime because we knew we wanted to make the build to Hellbender. So we mm-hmm. made sure she was healthy, ready to go, um, you know, and little things popped up here and there. It's not to say you didn't have any little, you know, niggles and stuff that, Mm -hmm. you know, popped up, but for the most part, we staved off injury really well. Um, I I wouldn't say that, you know, training was disrupted at all by injury or something that we had to cross train for a little bit just to try to relieve, but, uh, which was incredible. That was awesome. Um, And that was the time too. I really told you, I was like, I want to dedicate to this heart rate thing. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. That's that's for sure. She was, committed (laughs) she was committed to to heart rate we um you know for a mountain race it's very difficult to commit to heart rate training because anytime you go uphill your heart rate just spikes (laughs) and it's really hard to control and she was very patient you know and and she took my my (laughs) my comments and you know understood where i was coming from i'm I'm just trying to be helpful and give her the feedback um but she you know she adapted and learned okay this is where i can you know i can climb in this in this range so um i think that really helped uh, on race day as well there's definitely some training peak notes i'm so frustrated <laughs> i don't want to do this anymore <laughs> walking <laughs> and I just, I just it's okay it's okay i'm like oh I'm gonna I gonna listen to you, but I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's that's a, it's a tough place to be, especially for like I said for a mountain race. You know, like that's uh, that was admirable that you were able to uh, to commit to that and and, and do it so well. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and and we saw the results over the course of training. We saw yeah. your capacity to climb at a faster pace at the same heart rate that you were doing, you know, previously, which is mm-hmm. pretty incredible. Um. But, um, yeah, just, you know, watching that. And then I think the other component of your training that like, um, a lot of people miss, um, especially as ultra runners, because it's the first thing to go is the strength and mobility. You were really, really diligent about making sure that you kept your strength and mobility going. We, we kept plugging in mobility routines and, and be it, was it, uh, if it was folders or something you knew Mm -hmm. and did your on your own, you did it. And then strength it was always like you know um, i want to be working this or that and we just kept the strength training consistent right and at the end it just kind of tapered off into to core work but Mm -hmm. you know it it, i think that was a great great piece of your your training as well it it kind of completed the package especially for for hellbender 100 percent. after coming off quest last year so hurt like i couldn't walk and I mean, I was so banged up in doing those last, like the climb up Bumcom 
and then coming back down Mitchell on a knee I shouldn't have been running on I vowed like in that moment I strength and mobility it's it's a non-negotiable like if <laughs> you have to do it and I kept to that yeah uh, so um I I watched your <laughs> um your little short video of what pre-race jitters look like <laughs> um so on on Teresa's socials, <laughs> um, uh, I'll I'll put a link to Teresa's socials. And you, I think it was on Instagram that I saw it. Yeah, <laughs> she's pacing um, madly around her Airbnb, um, just dancing. Just <laughs> yeah, <it> is, <laughs> uh, she's got the pre-race jitters. <laughs> it's pretty cute. Um, <laughs> so um, we could tell how you were feeling <laughs> prior to the 4:30 a.m. race start. Um, <laughs> um, excitement was there. Nerves were there, um, yes. which was great, but you finally, you're at Camp Greer, you know, it's, it's a few minutes to 4:30. Tell us about what's going through your head. <laughs> I'm still dancing free race jitters. <laughs> <laughs> I have more videos like I have my um my polls and I'm just like tapping them like like little nunchuck just like get me <laughs> I just want to start moving <laughs> um yeah just just wanted to move like all those nerves and excitement it was just yeah. the energy was so high um everyone was so excited I got there probably like 20 I my Airbnb thankfully was like right there so I didn't have to drive too long. I could just show up. Um, so I wasn't at Camp Greer for too long. And I kind of planned it that way because <laughs> I didn't want to be sitting there. Um, <clears throat> but once I lined up, like once we like the countdown began, I was just like, hey, right, I'm just going for a run. You know, <laughs> um, just, all I got to do is just run. Like this is what all that nerves, like all of that accumulation, like I'm here now. Now it's the easy part. Just put one <laughs> in front of the other. <laughs> did you have um or well, I know you did, but why don't you discuss your goals going into this? Yeah. So um you always have your A, B, and C goals. The A goal kind of started off first as I wanted 30 hours. And then talking to you and some other people, I was like, you know what? It would be kind of cool to get 28 hours. Why not? So 28 hours became the A goal. B goal was 30. And then C was just to finish um, and finish smiling and happy. <laughs> it was always like the goal. Like, I just don't want to finish. I want to finish happy. Um, and yeah, so we developed a plan. And I, I blame you once again for this. <laughs> 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 when we were coming up with our plan, our pacing plan, I was like, you know, yeah, like 30 miles, 28 miles would be cool. He's like, just go do it then. And puts in 28 miles or 28 hours. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to go for 28 hours here. Let's do this. Um, so yeah, those are the three goals. I didn't have like a, I didn't, you know, like to podium or to place top 10 would be cool. Top five would be awesome. Um, it was a stacked field, so I wasn't really expecting to get like first, second, or third, but top five, awesome. Um, but however I get my like main like timing goals, I always look at like first, second, and third place and kind of like gauge it from there. Like, okay, third place last year was 29 hours. Let's ish. Let's do like 28. Let's do 30. So yeah. Right on. So you had your your ultra pacer plan. <laughs> um <laughs> And then um, you were mentioning the deep field. Uh, were you looking at the the start list to see who was going to be there? Or uh, had you I, talked to any of the other runners? I didn't really talk to any runners. I always look. I don't try to get too involved into it because um, it would just stress me out. And <laughs> yeah, because what's whatever happens is going to happen. And still like with this being like my first and even the 100k was my first like this was such a big year for first I didn't want to get stressed out with well they have more races than me and they have more finishes than me and I'm not as good as them I'm not even up to their level yet so I can't even go for that it was more just looking at oh, okay, they're going to be there. Cool. Okay. Like this is their past times. This might be a competitor. I might land here, but 
after like the first initial wave of signups, I really didn't go back to it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. That's cool. Um, so you start, you're heading out Jarrett Creek, right? Um, everything, you know, is, is in motion now. So take us through, uh, Jarrett Creek into, uh, to the first day station. It was so humid already, and it was 4.30 in the morning. I was like, oh, man, <laughs> this is going to be a long, hot race. Um, I had my headband on because I started with the head headlamp instead of the waist belt, and I was sweating through that thing already, and I was like, oh, man, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I kept my pace. Like I knew like that was not the time to go out hard you know it's easy to run that and just following like the pacing plan I kind of had an idea of like an average to stay around and I just kind of trotted along I knew if I could make it to the first aid station in an hour 15 minutes I'm on plan it's perfect and I just used that time to kind of like resettle in refocus on my goals and just kind of do a recap because everything is so exciting up into the race like you're organizing your pacers your crew and your goals are there but just like it's kind of on the back burner like you've been pushing towards your goals you have them but everything else kind of comes important so I just really refocus on like okay this is what I'm here to do this is why this is what I have been doing I kind of use that time just to kind of like go inside um and it did it just kind of kept my pace nice and steady my heart rate like everything was just even though I was sweating so bad already (laughs) (laughs) um yeah I just kind of just rolled into that first aid station of just okay I'm here we're doing this and then I knew once we got to heartbreak to star gap that's when like you know, we're going to start to climb. And I love that climb. It's beautiful. The sun was going to come out. So that's when you can like really start pushing. But right now, just take the time just to kind of be and get centered. Nice. And what was uh, <laughs> what was your nutrition slash hydration plan? Um, I had a bladder in my pack and I always put a little bit of like Himalayan sea salt in my water. So I had that with water um, in my pack. And then I started with two scratches because I knew I didn't really want to take too much time at that first aid station. Um, So I knew I could make it to the top of the Blue Ridge, top of Heartbreak. Um, So I had two scratches there um, to get me to there. And then after that, I would have one scratch, one water, and then just whatever was left over in my bladder. I never really, I filled it back up once we got to Mitchell, but that was it. It was kind of like more like a reserve um, just to kind of get me through. And then nutrition, I had a timer on my watch for every 30 minutes. So real food or spring energy, and then some kind of like candy or um, sugary something. So I would alternate. Very good. Learn from the wise. <laughs> uh, I don't know about wise. <laughs> Did that wise. happen the whole time? We can get into that. Yeah. But um yeah. going getting started. That's what that's what we're doing. Okay. I'm right on. Um so <clears> you know, enjoying yourself all the way up to the parkway, you get to the top of the pinnacle. Um, how are the view from Pinnacle? So funny thing is, we didn't have to climb Pinnacle this time. What? I know (laughs) it's like hallelujah just like came pouring down like I saw that sign to go straight and I was just like what so like I'm on my my pacing plan and someone like this group of people like just pushed past me that they've been behind me on heartbreak the whole time I'm like well you know like we're about to go up pinnacle like go ahead just like get your ride on you know (laughs) like I'm kind of like saving myself a little bit And this was on when we're on the toll road, like climbing up like that Rocky up. So then they like just take off running. I'm like, that's fine. I'll see you at the top of Pinnacle, you know, (laughs) and we get there and there's like all these signs that just say go straight. And I just, I was like, what? So I guess they didn't have the permit this year or however that worked out. Okay. Um, I don't know, but that wasn't, that wasn't a thing. That wasn't a thing. 
I was kind of like ready to go up there because I liked that climb. Yeah. Um, but not having to do it in that moment, I wasn't going to complain. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Understood. Yeah. Um, so you get over to uh, Bald Knob. That brings you down to South Toe, um, mm-hmm. kind of a big aid station there. Um, did you spend any time there? Just enough to refill the scratch. I had little scratch packets. So did one there um, and I had enough nutrition. I wasn't going to rely too much on the aid station nutrition. Like if anything was there fun, I would enjoy, but I really had like my nutrition dialed into like what I wanted to bring. Um, But I did make sure to like eat like a real food granola bar thing going up that South to climb Um, and just kind of hiked it out as fast as I could um, and it was kind of in that moment too, that I realized that it wasn't a goal going into, but it's like an aha moment. And so realizing this opened up so much of my race. There's this girl who I was kind of like leapfrogging from the beginning of heartbreak and old me would have turned into like chase her down mode or am I being chased mode and like fight or flight um missing out like if I stayed in that mindset would I have stopped to fill out my scratch because I still had a little bit of water in my bladder um not care like not caring like a lazy like not in that sense of like oh I just don't care but not caring if someone another female or anybody was in front of me or behind me just really honing in of like where I was in that moment allowed me to just really dig deep into that footstep at that moment what do I need now and I think because we were frogging each other so much and like she was part of the group that like just took off and then I was like I'm not gonna take off right now because I want to climb strong um and trusting where I was at and like my own plan and it lasted like the whole race like I never had that stressful, like, oh, who am I? Or like, where am I? And like, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. Slowing down in those moments really helped. And I think that really set the tone because she was really frogging on that South Toe road too. And I was just like, this is cool. Okay, whatever. Like, I may see you again. I may not. Like, it's fine. Um, So yeah, that was a big growth moment for me. Nice. Which brings you to one of your your good friends, Newberry. Yes. Um, yeah, a nice descent. She smiles as I say Newberry. <laughs> um, <laughs> we became very good friends. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've got your nice descent down Newberry. It takes you out to Curtis Creek Road mm-hmm. and on to the next aid station. Um, how was the how are the legs doing on that descent? They were good. I honestly like that whole descent. I lost myself and like in the beauty of that trail. I hadn't been up there since spring had sprung up there and there's everything was gorgeous. The Creek was flowing and just, I just felt like I was floating. Like life was perfect in that moment. Um, I knew I was about to get to Curtis Creek. My friend Kelly was volunteering there. I was just like, I'm just going to get to her and just hug her. And like, life is great. Um, Yeah. That was just one of those, that section I definitely was just enjoying the moment like to its entirety. Legs felt great. I was just trying not to sprint. It was like those long flowy downs and just (laughs) kind of going with it. Yeah. Nice. Um, So you get down to to Curtis Creek. Friend Kelly, you said, was there. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. If you know Kelly from Foot RX, um, her smile was just like brighten up the room so I came in I was like Kelly and she uh, heard me and it was like that slow-mo like I uh, love you hug. <laughs> <laughs> so I got some little energy boost from her there that was perfect nice nice um yeah. you, you've been able to stay present <laughs> um were you thinking at all about Snooks the climb that was ahead of you I knew Snooks was coming and I was so excited for it <laughs> like <laughs> I've been on Snooks, like, and I knew what I was about to get myself into. Um, I did prepare. I knew it was about to get hot. Like, it started to get hot 
coming into Curtis, um, a little muggy again, because coming down Newberry and like that side, it feels good. And then like you come around the mountain and it's always hot up there. So I was making sure I was getting fluids in. I had a little bit more food, um, made sure I had like high calorie food before I started climbing and I was ready. Um, and then once I got on snooks like the climb climb part it got so hot like mm-hmm. I've been on snooks on a hot day this was times a million like that sun was getting us and you know I was still on pace like ultra pace plan and I was going faster than what they had me at so I knew I was doing good but it was probably the slowest climb for me personally coming up snooks um but you just couldn't like I did not want to push it up there and I kept telling myself I was like I know I could go faster but this is not the time and the place to do Agreed. that yeah yeah right on um but you know the, the crazy thing about like getting up uh, snooks and then up green knob is that the backside of green knob even though it's a downhill it's very slow downhill yeah it's very technical descent especially if it's wet like last year Mm -hmm. Um, it just, it actually slows people down, which, you know, it's, you would think you got this nice downhill. I'm going to pick up some time, but really not much time to pick up there. That was the first, like going up snooks and even before green knob, just, I mean, I had enough water, like I was fine. I wasn't dehydrated, but that's like when that mental game came in, I was like, all right. And I had on my, I always have like mottos of the race and like write it on my leg or hand and this one was willingness to hurt um and I kept repeating that one (laughs) I was like Uh I'm not like painfully hurting but this this is hard like this is that was the first moment that the race got hard and just plugged away and there are some people behind me and their mindset was not as positive as mine (laughs) um Uh They were not not too happy. And finally, like I kept asking them, like, do you want to pass me? Like, no, this is fine. This is a great pace. Let's just keep going. But I had to just like stop and I just made up an excuse. And I was like, I'm gonna stop and drink some water and rest a little bit. You know, I'm kind of hot. I I had to get myself away from that conversation because like you are your mindset. Like in those tough times, if you allow your mind to go to the pain in a negative way you're gonna feel that pain in like a negative way I was hurting it was hot we were all dying but I didn't want that to be my focus and that's what that conversation was I was like oh guys I'm just gonna stop for a second but Mm. let's go ahead like I can't be around this um so yeah and then I got to the top and Tara was up there and she had just gallons of cold water and I just got my head all up in it yeah <clears throat> nice. it felt so good <laughs> and then you get to the top of green knob and it's cold again and I'm like why did I just douse my head with cold water <laughs> <laughs> oh and then coming down um you get to the bottom of green knob and you get on the mountains to see and the, for whatever reason I, I mean to me and I have not not run hellbender I've just run you know sections of the course um but that section i don't know why but it just seems to take forever it's so long (laughs) yeah like i mean it's only what mile and a half maybe two miles maybe but i mean to get to neil's creek you're just like where is it you know like it just keeps (laughs) making these turns and you're like and then you go up and what the heck (laughs) yeah it's it's oh where am i (laughs) so and then um did you have crew at uh, at Neil's? Because that's the first time you can see your crew. Yep, so. I did. That's where um, Brett, my boyfriend, was waiting with Nate. And then my mom actually volunteered at Neil's Creek all day. Nice. So she was there. Yeah. Um, she got to see me come through too. But yeah, Nate and Brett were waiting for me there. Nice. Cool. Um, so you get into to Neil's and, um, you know, you've got um, about 50K in now. Mm-hmm. and uh you, you know the next section obviously is one of the tougher ones right you're about to go up mitchell yep. so what are you doing in that that aid station there how are you you know preparing yourself for that climb and 
drinking an ice cold soda water <laughs> <laughs> um during the forever one and a half miles that's the only thing I was dreaming of um so yeah I just got rehydrated Nate put a bunch of ice because it was still really hot then um a bunch of ice on my back in between that my pack that cooled me down I ate a sandwich um did a little dance (laughs) my mom has video of me like shoving like with all this ice in my on my back and me just like eating a sandwich and like dancing (laughs) (laughs) just staying happy honestly like I was just so happy to see them like that first half went so great and I was actually stoked to climb up Mitchell um and get to the crest trail I know it was it's hard and technical but it's so fun and like Mm -hmm. I knew that was gonna be I didn't know what was going to happen. Something was going to happen up there. <laughs> so uh, just mentally preparing for that. Um, but yeah, I had towelettes and just kind of did like a nice refresher. I didn't change clothes or shoes or anything at that point, but repacked the pack. Um, yeah, that was nice. good. Like energy re-up for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah. what did uh, what did mom think about this whole endeavor? <laughs> she's like well, you're doing what when I was prepping like because she's staying at the house she's like that's a lot of food you're prepping more food I was like mom I'm eating a lot <laughs> <laughs> you eat a lot out there I'm like that's pretty much why we run for the snacks <laughs> 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 she had so much fun like her seeing you know because that's the first crew for everybody so right. um her watching she was there from like 9 30 to 7 and so she got to see like everybody come through nice. um she got some hugs and some cries and she's like oh. oh my gosh this is like uh-huh. you guys are amazing so yeah it was really cool for her to be a part of for the first yeah, time that's awesome yeah. very cool thanks mom for volunteering yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so um I didn't get a chance to look at the uh, the participant guide this year. Did they make Mitchell a crew accessible spot? Yes, they did. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Great. That was something I had suggested for for this year. That's awesome. So, um, you're heading up Mitchell. It's a solid climb. I mean, that's a a 10k of uh, you know somewhere between three and four thousand feet of gain. Mm-hmm. Um, just brutal. Um, doing okay. Heading up there. Still yeah. doing good, and I was still like. I wasn't, it's funny, like, I just thought of this, like, I wasn't people chasing, but I was definitely pace chasing still at this point, like, got to stick to the spreadsheet, you know, because I came in to Neil's 30 minutes early, which is probably because we didn't climb Pinnacle, Um, but I just kept asking Nate, how are we doing? How are we doing? (laughs) (laughs) We're on pace, and he's like, we're fine, we're fine, we're good. Um, So, yeah, we just, like, trucked along, and... The beginning was probably like the hardest for me. And I think it was just kind of coming out of the crew station, that flat little road that you run, and then kind of just like resetting your mind to like, okay, I'm back on the trail. I'm back in the mountains, like reset your pace, like hone in, like, whew. Um, Cause yeah, that first little push was the biggest push. And then like, once I got comfortable again, like we just, chipped off the miles and laughed and <laughs> Nate Nate got first hand of all my little one line songs that keep me going and <laughs> so you could they pick began up, there. When could you pick up Nate? At Neil's. At Neil's. Okay. You yeah. made it okay. Wow. So he joined you from Neil's. So you guys went up Mitchell together. Yep. Um get to the top of Mitchell. It's usually it's mid afternoon or mm-hmm. about that time. Yeah. How is the temps well it started raining on us um first started to sprinkle and then like big raindrops and then it started pouring like right when you start the power line Mm -hmm. area on Mitchell Mm -hmm. um so we stopped we put on rain jackets and the temps were fine and thankfully um I made this crew station not so much about like repacking my food and nutrition and everything, maybe fill up my water. Um, But it was more of like a gear check um, just because temperatures can change so much up there. Like I had backups of like a thicker rain jacket and anything and everything to get me over that ridge. 
Um, so we get up there and from last year, like pacing, we couldn't ever find the car. So I had a random orange cone at my house. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I decorated it with like blinking blinking lights and stuff. So <laughs> I would just have them put it on the car. <laughs> so whenever we came out of the trail, we would just look for the cone. And that <laughs> night it would be lit up. <laughs> it worked perfect. <laughs> it was one less thing to worry about. Like just look for the cone. That's the crew car. That's um, well, we're looking for the cone. And I'm like, Nathan, I don't see a cone. And he's like, maybe they forgot to put the cone up there. <laughs> and I'm like, cause we made perfect time. We got up there at four. Um, and there is no cone. There's no crew car. And uh-huh. I was like, oh man, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> My crew is not here. So we went into the aid station and Robin was working and she helped me refill my bottles and I had some extra, you know, scratch and everything, but I had enough nutrition already planned, packed to get me to Colbert's. So I was good there. I had some potatoes. Nate was trying to get in touch with the crew um, just to at least let them know that we're going, <clears throat> but there's no service. Like we couldn't get a hold of them. And I was like, Robin, if anybody asks for me, just tell them that we went. And like the tracking system wasn't the best I learned afterwards. Like it just kept pausing some. Um, and all of a sudden I hear Teresa, <laughs> we're almost down. Like we started running and I'm like, I was like, Nate, now we have to run back up. Do we do it or just keep going? <laughs> 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 but we ran back up to the parking lot. Um, so yeah, and just got a few hugs and they got de um they got routed the long way somehow. Like GPS mm-hmm. took them over to Burnsville and then oh, back up. Geez. Um so yeah, so it took them twice as as long to get up there. Gotcha. Yeah. The um for those that that don't want to make the same mistake, the written directions are in the participant guide. <laughs> <laughs> I had them in their binder. <laughs> I know you probably did, but you know, but we got we got to think about this here, Cruz. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know how to get to Mitchell. We live here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But you know, you gotta you gotta yep. love them. Yep. Um, yep. but yeah, they got there just in time, and but I didn't need any gear. Like temps were, I was comfortable. Um, I ended up actually taking off because it stopped raining. So I took off my rain jacket and just ran in the tank top over the ridge because it felt so good. Nice. Yeah. That that ridge is something else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and even <laughs> yeah. the first mile of going down Colbert's, you know, that's mm. such a tough section. Again, it's like, you know, people think that they can get moving again, but it's, you know, there's no, no, no making up time there until you get about a mile down Colbert's, then it starts to become, you know, more runnable. Um, well, I even messaged Nate. I was like, in this whole plan, this section, like they had me like at 16, 17 minute pacing. And I was like, I, <laughs> nah. this is going to be crazy. So yeah, that definitely. was kind of like the point where like, we were just like, you know what, whatever happens, like we are going to push as hard as we can um, and do what we can. And I'm not going to be a pace chaser anymore. Um, yeah. Well, the, you know, the difficult thing about <laughs> the ultra pacer is it doesn't understand the technicality yeah. of the trail. <laughs> it's only looking at elevation profile. Yep. So, you know, like that's something to note for those that use ultra pacer is if you know, there's a technical section, you may have to adjust pace, you know, based on that. So yeah. then like Teresa just said, you know, like it had her at 16 to 17 minute pace. But the reality is if you're on the crest trail, that's, <laughs> it's not a reality. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so you guys got over to, to Colbert's heading down Colbert's. Um, how you doing? Nutrition still going okay? Um, again, like I'm just goofy when I'm out there, like I'm continuously just making up weird songs and laughing and cracking jokes. And Nate noticed that I got quiet and he was like, when's the last time you ate? I was like, why? Cause I'm not speaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, exactly. Um, so that point I, I had a Bobo's bar, which was 300 calories. So Trying to eat that going over the crest trail with like one hand of that and then like your poles 
and it's so dry. Like those things work for like three hour runs <laughs> that I found <laughs> out. But once you hit like 12 hours, no, um, <laughs> I couldn't breathe. It was, it got comical at that point, <laughs> but we're trekking along. We're, we're definitely still moving. And after that nutrition, like got back on point. Um, and then coming down Colbert's, I kept telling them that it's going to open up soon, right around this corner. We can run the next little part. And it's still just forever technical. That one and a half miles is like 10. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. But he did a foot check and like, I had a hot spot and I was like, you know, like how, like, should we check it? Is it just like hot? It doesn't hurt, but I feel something on my heel. And he was like, if it's like burning fire hurt, we'll definitely check it. If it's like not really hurt and it's just a hot spot from coming down all of this technical climb and everything, let's just pay attention to it. And then half mile down, I was like, oh, something just ripped. Something happened. (laughs) (laughs) That is no longer hot. That is on fire. Oh my gosh. So... I resorted to kind of like running on like my tiptoes on my left foot. I was like still have having a run pace, but definitely was like, yeah, we have to check this out. Um, so we got down into Colbert's and I had a it wasn't a huge blister, but it did pop. Um, so my crew is amazing. They cleaned my feet off and <laughs> taped me up and once like we got the tape on there, I changed socks and a new pair of shoes and it was fine for the rest of the race. Like I didn't feel it whatsoever. Um, my right pinky toe I knew was going to come off. I kind of felt that, but it's just like that feeling of, okay, yeah, probably going to lose that toenail. <laughs> um, but no medical need for it. I have like the weirdest bruise on it. Oh, it's like a mohawk bruise. Like it goes down the straight of like my pinky toe. <laughs> um, but yeah, they taped me up. I got some good food there. I was eating almond butter sandwiches with Swiss cheese. <laughs> that was <laughs> my crew time. <laughs> it was so good. Um, <clears throat> so we ate, taped up my feet and got out of there quickly on that one. Nice. Nice. Um, also want to be respectful of your time too. So, um, <laughs> we're now we're into recording, um, <laughs> which is awesome. But, um, so, uh, from Colbert's, uh, give us the highlights of going back over to, to Neil's. I kind of look at like, you know, there's two aid stations from, you know, yeah. in between, but it's that section is, it's not as, I mean, going up Buncombe horse trails, it, mm-hmm. it's, it has some tough sections, but, once you get up and you're on that kind of flattish grade, you know, it's, it's pretty, you know, pretty tame compared to the rest of the course <laughs> to get back to, uh, that's to what we thought too. <laughs> we're like, we're going to make up time up there. So like we powerhoused up bunk them. Um, the climbs, like all the climbing felt really good. So we just kind of made, we just kept saying, keep hammering, keep hammering, um, get up there. Um, so we made it up there and the goal was to start running after Camp Alice and getting into Camp Alice, like where it's really flat. It's always so wet up there. I mean, yeah. if you know, if you're, if you're from here and have ever been on that trail, it's a soaking wet mud pit. And by then it had rained one steady. No, it rained. It started raining on us again. So it was raining when we're up there. So now it's like twice wet and those little logs that they put in there to help protect your feet, they were moving around and like turning around. Like there's like, you're just getting soaked. Your feet are done. Um, I almost felt, I was like, this is so much fun. Hopscotching on the log and (laughs) as it rolled and catapulted me forward. Um, So yeah, making up time and running, during that section was not a thing just because we're like these everything is so gross um so it's funny like we always we thought that we could do that up there but once again we're slowed down to like a safe very I mean we're power walking we're going fast as we possibly could without rolling our ankles um but running could have 
made me roll an angle. So we decided to walk it out. That's and then once we got down onto like the lower and into South Hill, we, we picked up speed a little bit, but. Gotcha. Right on. Um, so um, when you got into Neil's, um, how were you doing on your projected time? Um, that put us about two hours behind. Um, once we got to Neil's, I came in to Colbert's, I think 30 minutes behind. And then by the time I got to Neil's, I was two hours. So gotcha. yeah, at that point, it was just plan A of 28 hours. That wasn't going to happen. Um, so I was like, maybe 30. So like, and it happened again during the race. Like you just, you have to be flexible with your goals during the, those big mountain races I found because you can't get mad at it or stress about it or let it ruin your race because things change. Like we didn't know. I mean, I knew it was going to be wet up there, but that wet and slippery and loose rocks right. where it just wasn't safe to run at that point in time. I didn't know that. So yeah. Yeah. things happen and you just have to adjust your plan and right. stay right. positive and optimistic and still have and the, fun the, like, again the pacing plan didn't account for that right so yeah yeah that, that's that's the other hard part um it would be great if the you know they could take um somebody's you know results and kind of average mm -hmm. and see what the slowdown percentage is and then <laughs> you know compensate that within the algorithm so the pacing strategy makes a little bit more sense yeah. for, for each race i'm sure that's pretty difficult but Say, yeah, it's it's computers. Money. It's AI. They can do <laughs> yeah. anything nowadays. Right. 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 Oh. <laughs> but so. no, spirits were still high. Um, I got like for like 10 minutes, I was like, okay, I'm getting a little sleepy. But I mean, it was like coming into 2 a.m. Yeah. Um, but that was like the only time where I was like, I'm tired. And <laughs> Nate was like, Yeah, I mean, it's two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> You're usually in bed right now. It's okay. So <laughs> I did a quick shoe, shoe change there just because coming off of all that mud. Um, and this is at Neil's. Neil's, yeah. Had another sandwich, picked up my other pacer, repacked my pack. Um, and we kind of repacked it thinking that the next aid station would be like really quick. So it was packed pretty good. And, oh, I had a caffeine pill at that point. Um and was off yeah right on cool. yeah so, um which the next section brings you up neil's creek over into curtis creek and back down to the curtis creek aid station kind of a tame section in mm -hmm. regards to it's not very technical i mean you have to climb up to the parkway but then it's a nice descent down to the the aid station it was so muddy though was it yeah gosh curtis huh. i kept um uh, joking that like I would gain like 2.2 seconds because I would just like slide <laughs> on top of the mud <laughs> and that's when my watch died too I didn't realize like the battery was dying so I couldn't really see like what my pace was like shuffle running or walking so my pacer Caleb I was asking him I was like am I going faster like power walking and eating some more food or should I try to like shuffle so we would do a little bit of both like I really wanted to open up my legs and kind of stretch them out a little bit during that part mm -hmm. so we would run ish like the ultra run you know mm -hmm. um kind of down where it wasn't so muddy and then we would like power hike the rest of the way but mm -hmm. we made really good time coming down that one okay right on um <clears throat> Caleb was just pacing to Curtis Creek correct Yes. Did you have a pacer from Curtis Creek to the finish? Yep. Yeah. Right My on. adventure buddy, Kate. All right, Kate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so. Bringing me home. Right on. Um. All right. So you're into to Curtis Creek. This is kind of the final pull. You know, you're, now you're just doing basically the start backwards. Yep. Um. So, you know, bring us home. <laughs> bring me home. <laughs> um. Yeah, still like energy was high and just, and I just can't say it enough how much fun I was having. I mean, mm -hmm. we were laughing at this point and just let's just go do it. And like, I knew the Newberry road climb would be long, which it was. And I was just ready to get on the trail. Um, We saw the sunrise come up a little bit before the trail part. So 
we were able to take our headlights off and kind of get resituated. I was charging my watch and my pack during that time. And then, so I got that back out. So I captured like the last 20 miles of the race. Um, and then we started on the trail and I just wanted to get through like that first initial up of the trail to like those long, nice, I kept calling them horizontals. <laughs> <laughs> like I just want to get to the horizontals, um, <laughs> the switchbacks. Um, but that was another like mental good push. Like it was hard. I was tired at that point and my body wanted so much food during that section like that midnight, like that 2 a.m., I was just force feeding, which like my stomach was never turned. I just didn't want to eat. I knew I had to. But then my body was like, feed me. So I had like potatoes. I had, had oranges. I had another sandwich, like all the food during the long climbs up. I was just getting it all in. Um, And then crossed over the Blue Ridge Parkway, getting over that guardrail. That was like the hardest part of the whole race. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do what right now? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Lift your leg. See how, like, how those hip flexors feel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Getting on the south toe, that's the first time that I felt my ankle be weird. Like it didn't bother. Like there was no feeling of anything being weird the whole time. And I wanted to run down south toe and it did not want to run down south toe it was so tight and I was like man I don't know what's going on right now so we just kind of like sat up there and like loosened it out a little bit and got moving um and the whole time too I wanted a quesadilla and <laughs> <laughs> this aid station had quesadillas and I was so excited I put like five pocket quesadillas in my pack and by the time I left that aid station, my foot was fine again. It was like nothing ever happened. I was like, okay, it was just like, just mad at me. So we climbed up and that was, I mean, we left there full on energy. Um, Stoke was high. Mm -hmm. And that last climb I was kind of worried about because it was the last climb. But it was easy. Like we were just, we just powerhoused it up and we were joking, we were laughing and I was like, I'm going to run down heartbreak. She's like, you are? I was like, I'm going to run down heartbreak. We're doing it. We're doing it. So we started to run down. Like we got, I was like, once we get past like the technical part, I was like, I'm not there to run the technicals. <laughs> we'll get down, like we'll shuffle down. And then once it opens up any runnable where I'm not going to trip and fall, we're running. So we started running down. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, again, my ankle was like, oh, joke's on you. No, you're not. Huh. So at that time, I was kind of like on point to finish around 32 hours, which was, you know, as the course went on, I was like, 32 hours. That's that's great. Like, I'll take that. Um, and it took me so long to get down heartbreak. Like, mm -hmm. it was just a hobble. Like, I could not. Mobility of my ankle was not happening that was the only time I was mad and frustrated because my legs felt so great and I just wanted to go. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> we got down and the whole goal, this whole race was to be able to run Curtis or Jarrett Creek in. And we were going to that last aid station and I was like, I don't think I can do this, but it's going to take me like three or four hours if I'm walking this slow. And I was like, <laughs> that's not going to happen. So we got to the aid station, refilled my waters. And like I told, I looked at Kate and I was like, I'm running this. I was like, I did not train this hard <laughs> and put in this much work to sit here and regret this finish and be mad. And I mean, I never thought that like I seriously injured my ankle. Like I, the whole time I was like, this, this is mad. Like I never had a time where like, Ooh, I popped that like, or Ooh, I hurt that. So I didn't, I was confident in running. And then by the time I started running, it didn't hurt at all again. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> um, I think just going down that long heartbreak, it was pretty angry, but yeah. And yeah, I looked at Kate. I was just like, I'm we're going. So we power hiked all the ups and ran the flats and the downs all the way to the finish. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
that I I had it in me. I was like, I am running this the whole race in my head. I was like, I'm running to that finish line. I'm going to run Jarrett Creek. And like my goal, that was like one of the things, like my goals changed again. Like the time ones were out. So my C goal became my A goal. And it was just to finish strong. Like I wanted to finish strong. And in that moment, I wasn't finishing strong. I was going to finish with regret if I stayed the course. And I just had to switch like a light switch on and off. Like I just had to switch it and power through and dig deep into that um, and feel that pain, willingness to feel, willingness to hurt. Um, so, yeah. Oh, awesome. That's and then we crossed the finish line. Yeah. <laughs> what was your final time? 33.08, I think. 33.08. Yeah, I think the older sign up was thirty three oh eight. I wrote okay. it down. And would you? What place did you finish? Fifth place. Yeah. Yeah. So, very very, cool. very excited about that. Yeah, that's oh, so fantastic. That's amazing. You're yes. an amazing lady. <laughs> <laughs> You're an amazing coach. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh. you for trading me the way that you did. And oh man, it it was a blast. I mean, it really was. Yeah. I really enjoyed sharing that journey with you. It was, you know, um, I, I did feel a part of it, you know, like a lot of times, um, athletes don't communicate, uh, enough with their coach and, um, Teresa is wonderful <laughs> at, at her communications. Um, I, I'm always like, I'm very sorry, but <laughs> yeah. Teresa she, rant today. <laughs> she, well, she, she is a very good writer. Um, <laughs> she can express herself very well with her words <laughs> um, so um it made my job so much easier uh, because i i knew what directions we needed to head what we needed to work on how she was feeling so um her communication was essential to to her own success because she it really made it easy to coach <laughs> um so congratulations ma'am congratulations on such a well-deserved finish um, you're recovering now. The ankle is recovering, which is fantastic. Yep. Um, you know, I, 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 we we're debating whether x-rays were in order or not, but, it, um, seems like it's going to be okay, which is tremendous. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans for the future? 200 miles. <laughs> <laughs> Danger. You created a monster. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> That's. Yeah, that's just par with the course. Um, that's, <laughs> yep. I, I wouldn't expect less. Uh, absolutely um, wouldn't expect less. No, I definitely do want to do another 100 this year. So that's on the books. And then just continue to train and up level and, yeah, yeah. just keep reaching new goals and that's set awesome. new goals and find out new goals that I didn't even know I had. and. <laughs> become a bigger part of this community and I want to go pace and volunteer. Yeah. Do awesome. all the things. <laughs> <laughs> You're fantastic. 200s uh, are for next year though. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fair. <laughs> um, how can folks connect with you on Instagram and Facebook? Um, Instagram, Teresa Bowser fitness, and okay. then Facebook, Teresa Bowser. All right. Uh, and you are on Strava too, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people can, can follow your journey. Um, yeah. I'll put that stuff in the show notes. Um, any closing thoughts about your experience? Anything you want to end with here? Um, I mean, it sounds probably cliche, but if you have a goal, then go out there and just do it. Like, train for it, become better every day and know like what you're fighting for is important. And if you have something in your heart and your soul, that's telling you that it's important and that you want to do something, make it happen. And it might not be pretty at first, but know that you're doing things to get there and yeah, you'll make, you'll, you'll get there. It's just, it's a process. It is a process. Mm -hmm. And be okay with the process and love the process because that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. She embodies that. Thank you, Teresa, for your time. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. I love this conversation. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Again, congratulations, Teresa. Uh, such a fantastic, fantastic finish. Um, 
you know, it's, <laughs> it's incredible what we go through in an ultra. And, um, I really enjoyed hearing Teresa's story, especially, you know, watching day in and day out as, as Teresa put in the work, um, to try to get to, uh, to the finish line for Hellbender. So I'm just so happy and proud, um, to have been a part of that journey. So thank you. And, uh, Everything going on here. Um, track season is winding down. We've got uh, the state meet here, so uh, this uh, episode will release on uh, Thursday, May 18th, and May 19th is the state meet for my kids. So whew, it'll be a little break, um, bittersweet. Uh, could use the break. It's been <laughs> been a long time. Uh, I've been coaching um, almost since the fall. I didn't really have much of a break, uh, so uh, it's. Uh, Love working with these kids. I sure do. Um, so uh, I'm hoping for the best for them on Friday. Um, and then uh, coaching. Um, it's uh, whew, it's busy, um, as you know, but uh, it's it's great. <laughs> I'm still really enjoying uh, my profession and and learning. Um, as we wind up here, I'm going to start working on another certification. Actually, this one in nutrition. Uh, USCA, uh, that's one of the um, companies that I've worked through in the past. I have their running and their ultra running certification, and they have a, a nutrition certification. So I'm going to work on th that this summer. Uh, doesn't by any means make me a nutritionist. It just gives me a little bit more um, background and information that, uh, that I can use uh, in coaching. So I'm just trying to round off my coaching a bit. There's another one that I'm going to work on, which is um, form analysis, uh, working on watching people run. And again, doesn't make me an expert, but it gives me a little bit more information and how I can coach people better. So um, really looking forward to those um, and um, and continuing to, to read some books that I just haven't had time to read. So, um, it, you know, I'm hoping to catch up a little bit this summer. As far as training goes, um, well, we had an honest conversation. Um, my, my coach, Patrick Reagan, and I, um, I am, I'm at the point in my life where my body just doesn't seem to grasp the stimulus of workouts anymore. Um, I think we've kind of squeezed that lemon, if you will. Um, I just, I don't rebound and perhaps it's the combination of, uh, of volume and workouts, but you know, I need the volume. That's for sure. Um, you know, not, well, maybe not as much as I've been doing. I've, I've been close to 90 miles in the past few weeks, um, you know, which is kind of high, uh, obviously for, um, for someone my age, um, now, you know, and, uh, when I was younger, 110, 120, that would be my, my max, um, you know, uh, even post collegiately uh, and, uh, you know, not too long ago, I was still doing hundred plus mile weeks, but as I've aged here, I've learned, you know, my body just doesn't recoup like it used to. So we had that conversation and, um, we're just focusing on volume. I'm going to throw in some strides here and there, you know, a few little pickups and stuff, but for the most part, we're not going to try to do workout every week. Um, I seem to be recovering a lot better now, um, having better runs, feeling better, um, you know, and, uh, when we were looking at it, my average pace was just slowing down and that's not what we want, obviously. So, um, looking at the metrics, you know, metrics don't lie. Uh, and you know, it's getting warmer. We have to take that into account for sure. Paces will slow down as get warmer, but in you know, the mornings here are pretty cool. They shouldn't, you know, slow down as much as they have. So, um, just being cognizant of that and recognizing that, uh, you know, the stimulus may be just too much. So, um, it was a good conversation. You know, we, we, we switched paths and, uh, I feel we're on the, the right path now. Um, I started using the sauna, uh, getting in, we, uh, I only have access to a wet sauna, uh, which, um, you know, uh, what if, what I've heard and, and Coop has stressed is that dry sauna is kind of the way to go, but I just don't have access to a dry sauna. So I've been using this wet sauna. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's only been a few sessions, but, um, you know, trying to get it in. So I get that, uh, that adaptation. So, um, you know, doing it a few times a week, um, uh, it's, uh, you know, especially, uh, with my schedule, just when time allows, um, you know, and, and trying to be outside more, um, been, you know, trying to get outside during the heat of the day, you know, be exposed practice has been great because, you know, it's the you know, heat of the afternoon. So I've been outside, um, you know, with the track kids. So, uh, just trying to get as much exposure to, uh, the heat as I can. And, um, really focusing on rehydration. 
Um, my wife has uh, really committed to make sure that I'm eating healthy. <laughs> um, I have a sweet tooth, um, and uh, it, it, it was you know not controlled, we'll say. <laughs> so uh, she's been really cognizant, uh, making sure that uh, I'm not snacking after dinner, and you know just kind of making sure that I'm not getting a lot of empty calories. Uh, so we've we've kind of dialed that back to kind of make sure that um, I'm eating well, you know, fueling well, especially in, in this this time of volume and doing a lot more volume. So, uh, to help me recover better. So, um, you know, we've really, I appreciate that. She's, you know, been really mindful of that. Um, hydration. I've stepped up my hydration, been drinking a lot more. I constantly carry a, a water bottle with me. So I've been drinking a ton more, uh, especially as the temperatures are getting warmer. Um, you know, so really trying to, uh, you know, do all the little things, um, and make sure that, uh, that, you know, uh, that I'm recovering as best I can reading an interesting book right now. Um, it's called my border collie doesn't stretch. Um, I'll put that in the show notes. Um, he doesn't believe in static stretching, which is, uh, interesting. Um, and he explains why and what we should do instead. So, I've uh, been reading that. I talked to, uh, one of the physical therapists, Wes Miller the other day, and he says, you know, well, it, it's, it's not for everybody. You can't say there's something for everybody there. You know, st- stretching may be, uh, something that, that, you know, somebody needs for a certain reason. So, um, I'm certainly not advocating that you don't stretch. <laughs> I'm just trying to, again, um, read information, see what's out there. Um, uh, I'm also really enjoying Coop's uh, Research Essential for Ultra Running. If you haven't checked that out, I think it's $99 for the year, but uh, each, I think it's each month they come out with an issue, and it's got three different research topics, and they go into uh, the research, what their findings were, how it's applicable. It's It's been really good, um, you know, kind of just – um, you know, things you might hear, uh, and they, they find the research and talk about what the research is, is saying. So, uh, haven't checked that out. Uh, that's on his website. I'll try to put a link in the show notes. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, um, like I said, it's, <laughs> um, it's a lot of stuff going on right now and that's great. That's so cool. Uh, Western States, uh, we're about five weeks out now, I think, which is, uh, just insane. Uh, we haven't received any updates about the race itself uh, or the course we'll follow, so uh, I'm still waiting on that. Um, at the moment, I'm still signed up for Old Dominion as a just-in-case, um, but uh, it looks like Western States will happen. Um, it just may be the snow route, you know, where we don't go up the escarpment trail uh, at the start. We go around, so uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, just uh, trying to be grateful uh, for the opportunity. You know, that's that's kind of the mindset uh, that, that I've taken is um, just be grateful that you have the opportunity to do this. Um, so uh, running with uh, running with that in my heart, it's been um, been a lot lighter. I've, I've uh, I'm not as um, overly concerned with um, what's beyond Western states right now. I know I have a lot, <laughs> but uh, just trying to focus on Western states and that opportunity and not miss that uh, to kind of take in that that experience. Um, so. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's everything that's, that's going on here. Um, I've got some, I got the trail work done on the mountains to see, um, kind of, um, cleaned out the water bars. They definitely needed it. They were full, um, water bars for those that don't know on a steep downhill. Um, you'll see the logs that go across the, uh, the trail. And then there's kind of a ditch that, um, proceeds out from the side that lets water drain. So it doesn't go straight down the trail and erode the trail. So those get filled up by debris and sediment. So you have to clean those out, you know, usually about twice a year. Um, so it, it definitely needed it. Um, so those are all cleaned out soon enough. I'll have to be weed whacking that section. So if you need trail work, uh, and want to get up with me and you're in the area, um, let me know. Cause, um, that section is really tough to weed whack. It takes me, um, you know, close to eight hours to, to weed whack that section. So, um, I'll be, I'll be up there probably, um, you know, somewhere in early June, um, be up there and, and weed whack my section. So, um, if you're looking for some work, let me know. I appreciate it. I know the uh, the Carolina High Peaks are looking for some help. Um, they've been posting that you know they need some help on their work days. Um, the Carolina Mountain Club they uh, have a quarterly 
um, work day coming up. I will try to put that in the show notes as well. You can sign up for that. They've uh, they've had some good turnouts, which is fantastic. I'm, I'm so glad to hear. I think the next one is June 2nd, if I remember off the top of my head. Um, but that's also on their webpage. Again, I'll try to put links in the show notes for Carolina High Peaks and um, Carolina Mountain Club. Um, but, uh, you know, it's time of year. A lot of work has to get done. You know, we, we often get out there and complain, oh, the, the weeds were so high. It's because it takes usually a volunteer to get out there and, uh, and do it. A volunteer, you know, such as myself. So, um, you know, if you, if you can help, reach out to those organizations. Uh, they're always looking for people to adopt sections of, of trails, especially the Carolina Mountain Club. They take care of the Mountains to Sea Trail and some of the ancillary trails that lead up to uh, the Mountains to Sea Trail as well as the Appalachian Trail. So um, if you can help, please reach out to those organizations. Uh, like I said, they need your help. Um, I think that's all I have for you today. And, um, you know, once again, thank you guys for being a part of this podcast. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Teresa. I sure did. And I want to wish her a uh, hearty congratulations once again. Uh, so awesome, Teresa. You're amazing. So uh, thank you guys for listening. Thanks for being a part of the MR Running Pains podcast. And until next time, keep running.